Here we're going to explore the behavior of the address fields that are in the Contact tab, the Accounts tab, and how these relate to what shows up on our mailing list report. Let's start by creating a couple of new contacts, and we'll do it using two different methods. The first method is creating a new contact from the Account tab. So from the Accounts tab, let's go and create a new contact from the related list. What's important to note here, I'll scroll down, is we can see that the mailing address fields are already pre-populated. I did not type this information in these fields. And this is because it pulled this information from the account ABC Supply. Now let's create a second contact, but we're going to create this contact from the General Contact tab, and then we'll attach it to ABC Supply Company. Now we can see for the second contact that we just created, we're still going to attach it to the ABC Supply Company, but the mailing fields are not pre-populated. Even after we save and it's attached to this account, we'll see that there's no information in the mailing fields. And here we can see that the mailing address fields are blank. Now let's run our mailing list report and see what we get there. So here we're looking at a report and it comes as no surprise that Tom Thompson will be on this report uh, with the ABC Supply Company address because if you recall we created Tom's record from the ABC Supply account tab and it copied those mailing address fields over from the account to the contact. What might come as a little bit of a surprise is that Rob Robertson is also on this report and he also has ABC Supply's mailing address information on this report. In fact, let's verify that Rob's mailing address fields are still blank. So here we are on Rob's contact tab, and we can see for certain that his mailing address fields are blank. So what we learned here was that the mailing list report in Salesforce will first pull the mailing address on the contact tab. And if the contact tab does not have any information on the mailing address, it'll pull that mailing information from the account tab that that contact is attached to. Now let's change the account that we've got both Rob and Tom attached to and see how that impacts our mailing list. So we've taken both of our contacts, Rob Robertson and Tom Thompson. We've removed them from the ABC Supply account and we attached both of them to the AT Parts Company account. And we've run our mailing list report and we can see that we have both of these individuals on our report. We can also see that they have different addresses. Let's take a closer look at what happened. In Tom's case, we created Tom from the ABC Supply Company account tab and if you recall then it automatically populated Tom's mailing address fields with the billing address fields that were on ABC Supply. So the values that were in ABC Supply's billing address actually got entered in Tom's mailing address fields. And in fact, those are still the values that are in Tom's mailing address fields. Here you can see for ABC Supply, it's at 246 Grove Street in Scottsdale. And for Tom, we still have him listed at 246 Grove Street in Scottsdale, even though that's not where AT parts company is located. Now for Rob Robertson, Rob was created and then later on attached to ABC Supply Company, which means his contact tab did not inherit the billing address fields and they were not pre-populated onto his mailing address fields. They were left blank. We also know that this mailing list report in Salesforce has the behavior such that if Rob's mailing address fields are blank, it's going to automatically pull the mailing address values from the accounts billing address fields. And that's exactly what happened here. Rob's address is at 123 Main Street in Flagstaff, Arizona. Now we can click into both of these contacts and verify this. 
So here we are looking at Tom's record, and sure enough, in his mailing address, he still has the 246 Grove Street, which is what his address used to be when he was at the ABC Supply Company. And here we're looking at Rob's contact tab, and we can see that his mailing address is still blank, which again is why it pulled up the mailing address for the AT Parts Company. Now let's see what happens if we have just part of an address typed into Rob's contact. So we're just going to put in the state Ohio and the country. And back to our mailing list report, we can see now what's happened for Rob is all of his address fields are blank except state and country, which are the values that we just entered. And of course, Tom still has the old address from ABC Supply Company. But the interesting thing here is that uh, just by entering a value in any of the fields on a contact's mailing address fields, this changes the behavior of how this report works. It, it's no longer going to pull the address from Rob's account tab. It's going to pull it from Rob's contact tab, even though it's a partial address. Now you can customize this report so you're not just pulling the mailing address fields from the contact tab. For example, you could also pull the billing address fields from the account tab, and that would ensure that regardless of what address is on your contact tabs, when you run your mailing list, you'll always have the current billing address for the account that that contact is attached to. The point is that once you have a good handle on the address behavior in Salesforce and how this affects the creation of contacts and their relationships to the accounts and the reports, you can decide what practices you want to put in place for your organization so that your mailing lists are as accurate as possible.